Welcome back hunters to another mouse and keyboard tutorial and today we're learning charge blade. Charge Blade is one of my favorite weapons in concept and while in Rise it may not be the hottest weapon, it still has some amazing skills and twists which I find really enjoyable. Now this video is going to be slightly different than my previous tutorials, we're going to go over the basics of different playstyles and the key attacks and combos that you need to know for Charge Blade. On screen are the key binds that I changed for my mouse and keyboard default so be sure to take a look at those. We'll talk about which switch skills and wire bugs mash well together for Charge Blade's different playstyles. I'll have another follow up video on builds and skills that you need for Charge Blade since there's a lot to cover in this one. The essential concept of Charge Blade is a very unique idea to Monster Hunter. As the name suggests, you charge up different parts of the weapon based on your playstyle. You can charge your shield alongside the sword or the axe. Now in Monster Hunter World, the Axe mode's final form was known as Savage Axe and it was always available. But in Rise, the Savage Axe form, or now known as the Spinning Axe, is now a switch skill dependent mode. So that replaces the sword, so it really pushes for separate playstyles. So in this video, we'll start off by talking about files and the file damage playstyle before continuing to Axe mode and melee damage and then we'll finish off with the switch skills and wirebug skills, which go well with each playstyle. So let's grab a wirebug and head on out. So let's start off with the first step of charging your blade which is charging your files. You can kind of think of the files as just a way to stash energy that you take from the enemy, maybe life force, whatever you want to think about it as, and then you take that energy and put it into your weapon to gain more damage. Similar to previous games, you can only charge your files by getting damage with your sword. A general concept to keep in mind here is that the sword mode is used for you to build up charge and fill your files, while axe mode is used to release that file energy. Your files change color as you damage the monster going from grey to yellow to red. Grey means that you have no energy, yellow means that they will fill up half your files, and red will fill up all your files in one charge. The easiest way to get to red from grey is actually just a single weak slash followed by a heavy charge double slash a spinning slash, and then finally another heavy charge double slash. Now some things to note about this combo, the heavy charge slash does take a moment to charge up, and you'll notice this by holding the right mouse button and watching your character's hand pull back. The moment you're fully charged is when your character starts glowing and the elbow is behind your back. Once you see that, it cannot charge anymore and you'll perform the fully charged double slash. If you release too early, you'll do a charged rising slash, which in my opinion is a waste because it has a similar long animation, but it does less damage and gives you less charge back. Now you might not be able to get all 4 hits in one go depending on the monster's movements. Generally speaking, you want to kind of fit these attacks in when the monster doesn't have big openings, so when they're moving around, because you want to fill your files and have them ready for when you actually do get a big opening to do some DPS. Because of this, I want to quickly mention one attack skill here. If you are attacking the monster in sword mode and you realize you need to reposition or to dodge something, instead of just dodging, what you can do is a fade slash, which is performed by clicking any direction key that you wish to go and clicking right click. It's a quick dodge which will slide you in a different direction but you can still attack at the end of it and then continue on with any other attacks to keep charging your files. Now aside from the charging combo that I just mentioned, the light attacks does have a 3 step combo, but I rarely use it, it's much slower to build charge, it's just much more efficient to alternate light and heavy. Now once your files are read, you have to perform step 2 to actually fill up your files. Holding control and then quickly following it with right click will conduct this and they will appear white and filled. From here you have multiple options for damaging and we'll go through each one. But before that, I do want to mention that you can still do sword damage once they are filled and your files again will go from white to yellow to red. If you use these files and want to refill some but not all, you can do the file animation while they are still glowing yellow and that will fill them up. Additionally, if you don't use any files and continue to do sword damage, you will actually reach a point where you will overfill your files and they'll start pulsing bright red. This causes you to bounce on all attacks. Your damage won't change but you won't be able to perform multi attacks because you'll be bouncing off of every single attack. So you always want to refill your files to reset the charge build up even if you don't use those files. But the good news is that you pretty much should be using your files at all times. 
So in this next section, we're going to talk about charging your shield, and then from there, we're going to branch out into either charging your sword or charging your axe. Now, in order to charge your shield, this can be done from two ways. The first is following the filling of your files, you can go right into the combo to charge your shield, which is clicking both mouse buttons at the same time, twice. Then you finish this off by clicking Ctrl to proceed into an element up round slash. Now the timing here is very important. You can spam left click and right click together as much as you want, but hitting Ctrl or the special action button must be timed when your blade reaches just behind your head. Additionally, you can look out for when your shield starts to release steam, these are cues that when you should be clicking control in order to charge your shield. The indication that your shield is charged is that it will start glowing or pulsing red. The second method is if your files are already filled but you had to dodge or you didn't get a chance to charge your shield, you can do the exact same inputs following any single attack. Now once your shield is charged, you can do multiple things at this point, one of which being charging your sword. To do this, repeat the same animation of filling your files by clicking control plus right click. The second time though, press and hold left click on your mouse and that will initiate the sword charge animation. It takes a second while your sword needs to fully retract into your shield. Once it does, you can let go and your sword will be fully charged with file energy. Now every sword attack that you do after that for about a minute will have some bonus file damage without actually using any file energy. Additionally, your sword will no longer bounce at any damage point on the monster, making it much easier for you to charge up your files from just about any position. Sword mode charge is a nice way to get some bonus damage in. It's not the highest efficient DPS method, but if you're in a tight situation where you can't get any of the big attacks out, charging your sword is always a good idea so that you are still getting that extra little damage in, which might lead to a knock or stun or something. It's a good habit to have that every 2-3 to three times that you reset your files, you should recharge your shield. In an ideal hunt with charge blade, your shield should always be charged because it gives you the ability to charge your sword, as well as it gives you other moves like guard point which absorbs damage and protects you, as well as also granting you other attack moves which we'll talk about later on. Now your sword being charged is a way to get some extra damage in small situations. But when you have a big opening like a knock or a stun, Charge Blade has one of the most satisfying attacks in Monster Hunter known as the Ultra Element Discharge. And yes, for those of you returning from previous game, this is the Super Amped Element Discharge. They just changed the name for some weird reason. So I'll just stick to Ultra Element Discharge for the sake of consistency. Now this attack is a way to release all your files in an instant. This is one of the main attacks for the file damage playstyle. And this attack does require your shield to be charged up, which is another reason exactly why you should always have your shield charged, so you can use this attack on demand. Now there's two ways that you can execute this attack. If you're in sword mode, you start with the same inputs as when you would charge your shield. So click both mouse buttons twice, but unlike the shield charge, that's it. You don't need to click anything else, your halter will start a swing, take a half step forward, and the animation will bring your charged axe from behind your head and landed right in front of you, dealing a high damage attack, followed by a series of blasts, the number being equivalent to the number of files you had filled up. The files will be emptied after this attack and you'll need to recharge and refill them. The second way to initiate this attack is our segue into axe mode. The ultra element discharge is actually an axe attack, which just so happens to have a way to be initiated from sword mode. But if you look closely, it's actually a morph into axe which your character then pulls it behind your head. So the second way is to first morph into axe mode using control plus left click. This performs a single morph slash and you can use this to morph back and forth between sword and axe mode, each time dealing a single damage. When you're going from axe to sword mode, all you have to do is click control. So while you're in axe mode, if your files are charged, Clicking left plus right click again initiates the exact same animation of pulling your axe behind your head and clicking nothing else, you can launch your ultra element discharge. Now this particular method of the ultra element discharge wasn't very useful in previous games because you'll notice instantly that in axe mode you walk slower and your morph animation does take a lot of time. But I want you to keep this method in mind for later on when we talk about one of the new wirebug morph animations, specifically the morph advance which makes this attack method a whole lot more applicable. So in general, the Ultra Element Discharge is one of your highest dealing damage attacks. 
It does take a bit of precision and timing to understand monster patterns, because otherwise you'll miss some of your file damage. The files always travel in a straight line when you launch it, so you have to position yourself where they will all hit the monster. That being said, I do want to point out that if you're just learning the weapon, don't worry about the fact if you miss a file or two. It's a much bigger accomplishment if you actually are able to get the attack off and damage the monster and then get out of the way and be safe, rather than positioning yourself and worrying about that and getting all the files on the monster but then being hit in the process. Now there are a couple more ways to initiate the Ultra Element Discharge but we'll get to that in just a little bit. We're not going to segue into the Axe Mode since we've just introduced it, so let's talk about a few more things for General Axe Mode. Axe Mode, as I mentioned before, is a way of releasing your files. In Axe Mode, hitting left click twice will perform a regular melee combo that doesn't use any files, a rising slash, and an overhead slash. Not really commonly used attacks, it is a little bit more used when we have the spinning axe which we'll talk about in a little bit. Now the last regular axe attack is a movement skill. While moving in any direction and clicking left click, it'll perform a dash slam. Now this one is a little bit more useful because it advances you a couple of steps. So when you're in axe mode, but if the monster moves away or you're trying to close some distance, using the dash slam will be able to close that distance and still land the axe on the monster. The more important attacks are the right click combos, which are the element discharge attacks. If you don't do anything beforehand, you will perform Element Discharge 1, followed by Element Discharge 2. Now Discharge 1 is never really worth it since it's a single hit for a single file with a long animation. Discharge 2 is the main attack where a single file is used when your shield is charged. The attack does a double spin, hitting the enemy twice in the same position, while only using one file, so you're getting twice the file damage for one file. So you generally want to skip Discharge 1. Now in order to do this, you need to use Discharge 2 following up certain attacks. So this can be any morph attack when you're morphing like normal morph into the axe mode for the first time. You can do the wire bug morph that we'll discuss later. Even after a dash slam when you close the distance and you can click on right click, you will do element Discharge 2 right away. So a general rule of thumb, if you want to use files individually, Discharge 2 is your way to go. And the main reasons you might want to do this is really just to get that KO damage if you're using impact files or element damage from the element files on a specific body part. This attack is a lot more narrow, a lot more precise, so you'll be able to target exactly where you want to hit. Now the final regular attack is something that you can do when your shield isn't charged. It's another main attack on a similar level to the Ultra Element Discharge called the Amped Element Discharge. It's performed in the exact same way as the Ultra Element Discharge, except that you can't have your shield charge. So instead of discharging all your files at once, the hunter is going to do a swing over their head, bring the axe down from the left side onto the monster. At the point of contact, it's going to do a single high damage attack similar to the ultra element discharge, but then it only uses one file to leave a damage spot doing three file explosions. Now this attack is a little bit quicker than the Ultra Element Discharge and the overall damage per file is slightly higher, but it's nothing groundbreaking. The main reason that you really want to do this attack and why it's still a great attack is because of the precision you acquire with it. The Ultra Element Discharge as you recall goes in a straight line, it hits multiple body parts and even while the damage doesn't change, one or two files may miss depending if the monster moves or shakes or if there's some environmental geometry getting in your way. The Amped Element Discharge releases that all that file damage in a single spot and it's the exact spot that you hit making it much more precise. Just like the Element Discharge 2, the most common purpose of using this attack is to greatly aim impact files on the head to cause KO damage or element files on a specific body part. Now speaking of files, Charge Blade has two file types in Rise, so let's go over them. If you use impact files, you can create some good openings with KO damage. That's literally all there is to it, they just basically do KO damage, that's all you get from them, nothing special. Alternatively, if you do use the element files, they are available which requires you to be a little bit more specific from where you release them. The hit zones do affect the damage of the files so it makes using the ultra element discharge a little less ideal unless the monster has good hit zones across the body. The amped element discharge would be more ideal with its precision. If you're running the impact files, you can just do a mix of ultra and amped element discharges. 
So just before we segue into switch skills, I'd like to talk about blocking. Charge Blade clearly has a shield and you can use that to guard any incoming attack by simply holding control. The regular guard will block most attacks, but you will take some damage and on big attacks you'll probably get pushed back and need time to recover. Having guard up skill will reduce the damage that you take for most attacks, but Charge Blade also has certain attack animations that have an automatic guard function that comes with added bonuses. Now this was previously known as Guard Point, and I'll continue to call it Guard Point since it's a nice name. But in order to use these Guard Points, your shield must be charged, yet another reason to keep your shield charged. And if executed properly at the exact time that you're getting hit, your shield will absorb the damage, it'll translate some of that into some charge into your files, and it'll also return some damage to the monster. In addition to this, you also get significant reduction in the knockback of certain attacks, so bigger attacks might not push you back as far as they usually would. So here's an example of me on the Tetra Drone in the training room. If I just use the normal block with guard level 4 on the build, I get knocked backwards and take a little bit of damage. Now if I do the same block at the same position, I initiate the guard point, you can see that I automatically block the attack while I was morphing. I take no damage compared to the regular block. And my knockback is so tiny that I can get right back into the fight. Guard pointing is one of the most crucial skills you can learn while using Charge Blade because of this last part. It creates a lot more window of opportunity for you to return damage or charge your files or just generally give you space to position better. After any successful guard point, you can also immediately initiate the Ultra or Amped Element Discharge, skipping half the animations and just going straight into the attack. The efficiency of using guard point into your high damage attacks is the key difference between good and bad charge blade gameplay. Monsters will exhaust or take a moment to reset themselves after an attack. Usually this would not be a big enough window for you to do a whole combination, but if you can guard point and immediately attack, you can get many attacks off in situations where you normally couldn't. So let's break down the three specific guard point moments. The first and foremost is the simplest one when you're morphing from sword to axe mode. As your hunter puts your sword into its shield, that whole animation is the guard point window. The second your whole blade starts moving together as the axe, the window has closed, so you have to aim to make sure that you get hit while you're inserting the sword. Now the opposite more from axe to sword also has a guard point but at the end of the animation instead of the start. Morphing from axe to sword does a quick spin. The protection window opens up when your character pushes the shield forward and ends when your character starts to loosen up and stand straight. Now this guard point does have a slightly tighter window compared to the previous morph and you also need to account for the spin. This means you need to be a little bit more preemptive and expect the attack to come and give yourself that space to do the spin before you get the guard point up. Now this guard point is more so important when you're playing in axe mode and you need to morph back to charge your files. You can morph back, get a guard point that'll start charging your files and then you can get a couple of quick hits to just fill up your files. Now the final guard point comes after the spinning element of round slash. The main time you really use is to charge your shield. So this timing window begins after that final spin when your character again pushes the shield outwards. You must time it so that you land the spin when you get hit. This guard point is a little more tricky because you have to use that spin and account for it and it's much longer than the axe to sword morph, so you have to be very preemptive with it. In my opinion, this guard point is only useful when you're trying to prepare to launch your ultra or amped element discharge but the monster does something you didn't expect. You can cancel your attack and just go into the shield charge animation while applying guard point to the front to give you protection. Mastering guard point is really the top tier, the high tier of like charge blade gameplay. It gives you protection from a lot of attacks, opens up a lot of windows for you to return some damage or gain or charge your files, and when those big openings present themselves, you are ready to deal some massive damage. If this is your first time playing Monster Hunter or trying charge blade for the first time, don't sweat it if you can't nail guard point in the first try. It's a very difficult skill to master, and it has a very narrow window, and you have to combine that with really understanding the monster, so using it against monsters that you aren't familiar with is going to be very tough. But I'll throw in an incentive for you guys. The coolest thing you can do with guard point is you can actually kill monsters with it or even knock them. I've done it a whole bunch of times and with a little practice I'm sure you guys can too. So if you do, let me know in the comments below.
So those are the basics of charge blade while focusing file damage. So in Rise, we do have switch skills and wire bugs that change up the gameplay. So let's take a look at some of these switch skills that introduce a variation to the standard charge blade gameplay. The first one is a switch from the condensed element slash to the condensed spinning slash. Now this essentially replaces your ability to charge your sword with charging your axe. If anyone ever played world before, it'll look very similar to the savage axe mode. The spinning slash, when charged, enables your axe to do multi hits with any axe attack that we previously mentioned. The charge on your axe actually lasts indefinitely, and by that I do mean that it literally never runs out unlike the sword which ends in about a minute. The catch though is that like unlike the sword where you can switch between sword and axe or even store it away and it'll still be charged, the spinning axe must remain out. The second you put it away, morph or even wire bug dodge, it loses its charge. Now the controls to charge your axe are the same as the sword charge, but the one key difference is that you don't need a shield charged. However, if your shield isn't charged, your blade will lose damage because the axe contains the shield. So you'll notice the axe is charged when it starts making a hissing noise and spinning furiously over your head. It looks absolutely fantastic and definitely one of my favorite modes to run in Rise. Now while the attack controls are the same, there are slight changes. In the spinning axe mode, your left click combo of the rising and overhead slashes now charge up your files which are pretty spectacular. On top of this, if you land the second hit of the element discharge 2 file attack, you gain back that file that you consumed. So this combined with the fact that the axe charge never gets removed becomes a pretty viable gameplay style to just remain in spinning axe mode the entire time. You don't even need your shield to maintain the spinning axe mode. If you lose your shield charge, you can use the amped element discharge instead of the ultra. Although as I've said throughout this video, having your shield charge does have a lot of benefits, the biggest being in case you need to guard point and exit axe mode, always having your charge shield will grant you this. The next switch skill changes your morph skill from regular quick morphs to longer animated morphs with greater windows of guard point protection. The main focus of this change is that they actually want you to use that guard point more efficiently and if you do execute it properly, you actually get extra damage on the following element discharge attacks, namely the ultra or amped element discharge. So if you're just learning guard point, this could be very helpful for you to understand the window of protection. This is definitely a skill that everyone should be using because once you're able to master guard point, the bonus damage that comes on the ultra or amped element discharge is super key and very helpful for any hunt. Even if you're using the spinning axe mode, this switch skill is pretty useful. Remember before when I was saying switching from axe to sword took a lot longer because of that spin? Well, when this skill is enabled, the axe to sword morph changes so that your shield is out at the beginning of the animation instead of the end. That means that you can guard point immediately if and when you need to. That works out really well with the spinning axe mode because as it is your movement is slowed. So if you need some protection right away, this switch skill has got your back. Alright and that's it for the regular switch skills guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the wire bug skills. So charge blade has some really neat wire bug skills and honestly I love all of them. The first one is the permanent skill which is the morphing advance. Now this is a specific forward direction movement skill which pulls you in a direction your wire bug is in. As you move forward, it'll always morph you into axe mode. Additionally, you are also granted iframes as you move forward so as long as you're in that forward animation, you avoid any single hit attacks from the monster. This skill is extremely useful for closing the distance and repositioning for most of your charge blade attacks. Following this skill, you can go straight into your ultra or amped element discharge by clicking left click plus right click. If you're playing this with the spinning axe playstyle, you can use this wire bug skill to move you around and reposition while your axe is still out. That way you maintain the charged axe. It is definitely a wire bug skill that complements the weapon as a whole. Now the second wire bug skill is the counter peak performance. Now this is the ultimate guard skill which acts like guard point. As I mentioned before, guard point absorbs damage and gives you file energy. Counter peak performance takes that to the next level and fills up all of your files if you get hit while holding this counter out. The counter ties down your shield in a forward direction with the silk bug so you can't move for 2 seconds but it blocks all forward incoming smaller big attacks. Multi attacks or ground attacks or anything from the sides you are not protected from so you have to be careful. 
Now just like Guard Point, if you're able to manage to block any attacks, you will be able to go into your Ultra Element Discharge or Amped Element Discharge, but the key difference is when Guard Point, you need to have your files charged beforehand. With the counter peak performance, your files could be empty, but the second you block, you're going to gain back all your files, so you're guaranteed an ability to do one of your ultimate attacks right away. This skill also benefits the spinning axe mode playstyle as well. If you're out of position or you need to block an incoming attack, you can use the CPP and then you can actually hold left click and you will go immediately right back into the spinning axe mode. It's actually even better since it skips a lot of the long charging animation that you would usually do to charge your spinning axe and it just goes right back into it. Now, just gonna give my opinion here, this is a great skill. Very useful for early on or very beginner users as well. But in my opinion, once you learn guard point effectively, additionally, if you also have load shell skill at level two, this enables you to fill your files quicker only at yellow charge. So these two combined essentially adds up to the counter peak performance. So once you learn charge blade really well, you don't really need this skill outside of attacks that you're out of position for or a situation that is unexpected. Thankfully, the final wirebug skill actually replaces the counter peak performance with the axe hopper. Now this is a very interesting skill in my opinion, very situational skill but very sick. It adds an aerial aspect to the charge blade axe mode while enabling you to still conduct both your ultra and amped element discharge. Pressing middle mouse plus E will initiate this attack that sends you a wirebug into the air and then pulls you up with it. Once you're in the air, you have three options. Number one being if you click left click, you do a simple jump slash, single hit, no files used. Number two is using right click, you will do a mid air element discharge attack. Now this attack is the exact same amped element discharge as when you're on the ground, only a single high damage hit followed by three file explosions at the cost of one file. The final option as you probably guessed is to click both mouse buttons to initiate the ultra element discharge. Again, the exact same as the regular, you need your shield charged for it. The only difference is that the first attack will land on the monster above them, and then when you hit the ground, the rest of the files get discharged along the monster. So from this, you can probably guess, it's going to be a big pain to aim the ultra element discharge. So that begs the question, why use axe hopper when you can be more accurate from the ground? Well, the answer is that the initial hits of the monsters actually have a higher motion value than from the ground. So your initial aerial hits actually do more damage on the monsters from the amped and ultra element discharge compared to when you're on the ground. Additionally, the axe hopper animation is just a little bit quicker than going through those first two attacks before you actually get to your ultra element discharge or amped element discharge while from the ground. So it does save you a little bit of time. Now while you're in the air as well, to help out a little bit, you can turn whichever direction that you want to. You have the ability to like click any of the directional keys and it'll turn your hunter in whichever direction before you land the attack. It's a great attack in my opinion, it gets off multiple file damages in a very efficient manner. So you'll definitely need artillery and load shells as your skills when you're using the axe hopper. Now something to be aware of though when you're using axe hopper is that when it uses files, the blades automatically changes back to sword mode after you complete the attack. This means you will have a large animation of the landing and then you're vulnerable and then you have got to morph back into sword before you can actually move again. So just take that into consideration when you're using the axe hopper. The final great thing with the axe hopper is that it actually lets you choose between the ultra element discharge and the amped element discharge. If you remember previously, I said that you can't do the amped element discharge if you have your shield charged. That is not the case here. With the axe hopper, you can do the amp discharges on small openings by clicking that right click. And then on bigger openings, you can use the ultra element discharge. And that is pretty much everything that you guys need to know to use charge blade. There are no real combos per se with this weapon. Your main focus is really just to charge your files up, guard point when you can, and take advantage of those big openings with your ultimate file attacks. I love charge blade and it's such a sick weapon to use so I hope you guys really enjoy it. As usual, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I'll be releasing a quick builds and skills video for Charge Blade as well as a follow-up to this one, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for that. Other than that, hunters, good luck on your hunts, stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Scott Sensei is out.